What's up? I don't know, May 26th, I'm here to give you my WWF SummerSlam 2002 review. This is the one that won. Uh, thank you, thank you for everyone who voted, and uh, I'm kind of glad. Uh, honestly, I was kind of glad it was this one. I mean, I love SummerSlam 02, but honestly, that, that one has a lot of reviews up, and th this one has like a couple at best. So uh, I'm glad to read this one. Uh, get one of the first ones on YouTube up. Um, but overall, this SummerSlam. If you're looking at the star ratings and thinking, how is he rating that an 8? Shows back back like in 1992 and at a different time were booked differently. And, you know, so they kind of have to be seen differently in a different light and rating them on a different scale than I rate current shows on. If this was a current show, it probably would be less. It would be around maybe a 7. But because of how this SummerSlam was booked and everything, you got to think that this was a great SummerSlam. The crowd was great, the uh, storylines were great, and, you know, I had a very fun time watching it. So, let's get right to it. Um, opener uh, being the Legion of Doom versus Money, Inc. Um, I, I sometimes forget how good the original Legion of Doom was, because you had the Heidenreich WWE version, which I didn't like at all. So, uh, they were very, very good here. Uh, IRS looked good, DiBiase was kind of getting a little rusty in the ring, but he still looked good here. Just a very, very fun opener. Three stars, nothing besides that, really. Then we got Virgil uh, versus Nails. Uh, Nails probably was in WWE for, like, six months. Uh, so most of you don't even remember, but this was a squash match. Nothing entertaining. Didn't go all that long, and, well... Yeah, probably shouldn't have had a place in the show. Probably should have been on whatever pre-show they had at SummerSlam 92. Uh, star. Then we had a very, very entertaining match, which should have gotten more time. Uh, Shawn Michaels versus Rick the Model Martel. Uh, they had a whole storyline in this match where it was involving uh, the Sensational Sherry, where she's Shawn Michaels' valet, and then she takes an interest in Rick Martel, so basically they're fighting over her. And I mean, the whole thing with her in this match was kind of corny, but if they had gotten more time in ring wrestling-wise, this could have been a great match. Um, they only got like eight minutes but, you know, um, definitely Shawn Michaels is coming into his own during this time. Our, I, was, I was always a pretty big fan of uh, Rick Martel because I thought he was very underrated. Uh, but, you know, it, it's good to see these two have a match here. Uh, but not, it was it was only okay because it only got a little bit of time. But it, if it had gotten way more time, it would have been much better. Um, two and a half. Then we got to the Tag Team Championship match. The National Disasters of Typhoon and Earthquake John Tetna against the Beverly Brothers. Uh, I believe their names are Bo and Bo and let me look at the DVD it doesn't say it on the back Bo and someone else um like Cliff or something like that I don't know uh, sorry I, I don't like the Beverly Brothers that's why I can't remember their names um but this match was um actually the, one reason I don't like the Beverly Brothers is they can't put on good matches um they're boring in the ring, and I just think they have a boring gimmick. I think their valet, the genius, is stupid. And just all around, I don't like the Beverly Brothers. Uh, I mean, they don't get the best opponents in the natural natural disasters. So I mean, eh, it was it was only okay. Uh, I mean, for especially for a SummerSlam Tag Team Championship match with the, the, the tag team division you had at the time, with um, who were some other tag teams? They had promos up the show. I can't remember them right now. Um, you had the Nasty Boys, you had um, a lot more teams than just this. You could have created a team or something that would have been much better than this match, honestly. Two stars. Then I got to a match which was actually a, a, a squash, but it was very, very entertaining. Uh, Repo Man versus Crush Brian Adams. Very, very entertaining squash, uh, but it was a squash at that, so it didn't go all that long. But Crush did look very good in, his, in, in squashing Repo Man, so star and a quarter. Then we got to the, it was being billed as the most controversial WWE Championship match in World Wrestling Federation history uh, in the Ultimate Warrior versus Randy Savage. Both these guys are faces and good guys. So I was wondering why they were calling it controversial, but then they introduced the whole storyline of Ric Flair should have gotten, uh, Ric Flair thinks he should have gotten the title shot instead of the Ultimate Warrior here. Um, so basically him and his, I, I, I guess his, it wasn't really his partner, kind of his protege in Mr. Perfect, Kurt Hennig. Um, so they were going to be in a, uh, has agreed with one of these two men to be in the corner, and who was sold out for the WWE Championship. Basically, there's a whole storyline with that. Um, it was kind of obvious to me, even though it was a, I think this is a great storyline, that it was neither man. But, uh, well, I had seen this match before, but um, 
in ring, this is a good match. Uh, I like it with all the storyline involvement. This uh, I made it almost great. Um, on commentary, uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan, who is a heel and kind of was, I guess, his friends with Hennig and per, uh, Flair, did a great job here. McMahon reacted to Hen Heenan great. So just all around put all the storyline and all this together. The ending probably was what got it from a four star level to the three and three quarter because they probably could have come up with a little bit of a better ending. But um, it was still a very fun match, very entertaining, and a very good match at that. So, but I do like the WrestleMania match a lot better actually from these two. So, uh, three and three quarter. Then we got to a match which was entertaining, but and, and continued the storyline. But probably should I can at least see why this was on the pay per view. Um, Undertaker versus Kamala. Um, I don't remember Kamala ever having all that great of a match, so th this surprised me all that much with heel Kamala here uh, against someone like the Undertaker. So didn't go all that long, but Undertaker, you know, was starting to kind of get into his great rhythm here of uh, just kind of starting to seem like a great dominant big man, which I, I always loved of his. But of course, this this storyline started the Giant Gonzalez thing, and I, I didn't like this storyline at all. Um, but, you know, it, it was, it was what it was, starting a quarter. Then we got to the match, which this SummerSlam is known for, and has been on DVDs all over, it was on the Bret Hart DVD, it, it was on the Best of the Intercontinental Championship DVD, just, this match is very highly, highly regarded, and for definite reasons, Bret Hart versus the British Bulldog, wow, uh, British Bulldog challenging Bret Hart for the Intercontinental Championship in his home country of England, um, you have the whole thing where the, these two are actual brother-in-laws because Bret Hart's sister Diana is married to Davy Boy Smith, the British Bulldog. So, um, and they went out there and put on a technical wrestling clinic. It was an amazing, amazing match. Um, pro was this my match of the year for 1992? I'm trying to think. I mean, I loved the Royal Rumble match from that year. I don't remember anything all that much from Japanese wrestling. Actually, never mind. There was a five-star women's match that year in Japanese wrestling. Uh, Yamada versus Toyota. Never mind. Uh, that Neither of those two would beat that. But anyway, um, uh, this match was amazing. Just, I don't want to ruin If you've never seen this match, uh, I'm sure it's on YouTube or something. You can find it. But just a great, great early 90s uh, WWE, WWF, sorry, uh, Intercontinental title match. Just a, a, the right match went on last. Gave these guys time. And it was awesome uh can't say enough about it four and a half uh it, but it's not the best match in SummerSlam history uh i like Shawn michaels triple h more than this i like what else is better than this i like owen hart bret hart still cage more than this i'm trying to go through the summer slams in my head i like um the tlc match at t SummerSlam 2000 more than this i like jeff hardy cm punk last year more than this undertaker hell in a cell uh, with Edge more than this. Well, actually, maybe not for that. That's kind of on the same level as this. Um, yeah, and that's probably it. Um, I might be leaving out a match. Oh, the Shawn Michaels Razor Ramon from uh, the ladder match from 1995. I liked, uh, I liked more than this. Um, and that might be it, actually. Yeah, I, I think that's it. I can't think of anything else right now. Um, if there's another match right in the comment or something, I don't know. But, alright, hope you guys like this. I'll see you guys later.